how to heal an upper ear cartilage piercing or helix, if that's really what you want to call it. Coming up next on Aftercare by a Piercer, episode number two. So stick around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So um, when I tell you these things, I'm talking to you at a level of expertise as somebody who has been in the body piercing industry for well over 25 years. Now, I always put a disclaimer at the beginning of any aftercare instruction video or consultation. I am recording this in April of 2020. If you've gotten conflicting information from your piercer or myself, if you happen to be one of my clients, uh, talk to them about it. Uh, things change. Inf new information comes available. Um, methods of taking care of piercings advances. We're a growing industry. Things change. If you get very conflicting views on what you should be doing and it seems wrong and they have no reason for it, maybe you should not do that and do this. Just saying. But talk to them about it. First and foremost, whenever you get pierced, you should get written instructions on how to take care of the piercing. These written instructions could should include the jewelry size, style in material also when the piercing was done and who did it with plenty of contact information in case you need to get a hold of them your piercer should also go through these instructions with you verbally there's a lot of reasons for this and the primarily one being is if something doesn't make sense to you it's a lot easier to ask that question when it doesn't make sense to you to try to get that piercer back on the phone to answer that question. Plus, they should be doing this. They should be going through a consultation before they pierce you, and they should be taking the time to explain how to properly take care of your piercing. Hold them accountable is what I'm getting at. First thing is um, average healing time on these, they range anywhere from a couple of months uh, to a year. Uh, I would say the sweet spot is between 12 and 16 months for most people. It really varies greatly, and there's no definite answer. During which time, I'm going to suggest doing compresses uh, using a clean paper towel folded up, or better yet, a sterile piece of gauze sponge, and saturating it with a sterile saline solution, then applying it to the area for roughly about 10 minutes, twice daily. If you wish, you can rinse it, but if you're going to rinse it, do it under running water. As far as saline style or type or brand, I like Nelmed, um, Wound Wash, or there's the piercing version of this, the piercing wash. This is sterile saline in a, in a can. It has a shelf life of three years. Um, it doesn't have any additives, no preservatives or nothing else. And it's sterile. Did I, by the way, did I say it's sterile? I don't suggest using other products. If you're in an area of the world where you cannot obtain that, another option would be mixing it yourself using sea salt in distilled water, roughly an eighth of a teaspoon per cup. Uh, you can also additionally heat it up in the microwave if you want it to be a little bit on the warm side. If you feel like you've contaminated the piercing, um, you made a mistake, I do suggest cleaning off the area of an antimicrobial or germicidal soap. Uh, mo I would love it if you were using satin or proven, but a cheaper alternative that's easier to find would be a mild antibacterial liquid soap. If you don't even have that, then just regular soap can help. What you're going to want to do is you want to rinse off the area, take the soap, squirt out a pearl drop in the palm of your hand, lather it up well, and then gently apply it to the piercing area. When I say that, I'm not saying work it through the jewelry through and dig around and do all this other stuff. Just clean off the general area. Let it stay in contact for roughly about 30 seconds, which is equivalent to singing happy birthday or Mary had a little lamb twice. 
If you don't want to sing, recite the Pledge of Allegiance twice. That's about 30 seconds for those that live in the U.S. Uh, rinse out of running water and then pat and dry with a clean paper towel. By doing this, what we're doing is we're cutting down the amount of microorganisms that are in the area to give your healthy colony of microorganisms a chance to repopulate the area and fight off any invaders. So basically, we're just giving your immune system a little extra help. Both of these things should be considered. That you should only do if you contaminate it, but that the soaks and that only come into play for roughly uh, starting on the day, the morning after you get the piercing and continuing until you stop seeing discharge of the ring or jewelry and the piercing will start to crater inward and get a rounded edge. Whenever you're in doubt of whether or not a piercing is healed, I strongly suggest going and seeing your piercer and having them take a look at it and make that decision for you. Now that moves us on to cross-contamination prevention. Things you don't want to do. Uh, first one being is... Uh, the only time you need to have any contact with the piercing is when you are doing the compresses. Always wash your hands before you do it thoroughly. Keep everybody else in Germany little fingers away from it. Understand that microorganisms like bacteria and other pathogens do move on the surface of your skin. So anytime you touch the area, wash your hands before you do so. At some point in your life, you might have been told to spin, rotate, or move jewelry during the healing process. There is absolutely no benefit to that. In fact, it's going to increase your likelihood of infection by overhandling the jewelry and possibly drinking contaminants into the piercing. So don't move it. Don't rotate it. No reason for it. No oral contact or exchange of bodily fluids on or around the piercing. That does include your own saliva. I've never understood why people think it's safe to lick their fingers and clean things. Don't do that. It's disgusting and your saliva is full of bacteria. Keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with the piercing. A way to get around constantly changing your pillowcase is get an old, soft, comfortable t-shirt that you kind of don't care about. Put it over your pillow, sleep on one side, sleep on the other side, turn it out, inside out, sleep on one side, sleep on the other side. Not only does this uh, keep you from changing the pillowcase every single night, but Piercings sometimes bleed a little bit the first couple nights, so it cuts on the likelihood of staying in the pillow in the pillowcase. Another another thing on sleeping is do not sleep directly on the piercing. You need to elevate it off the bed if you sleep on that side. It is best, of course, not to sleep on that side, but if you absolutely have to, or you've done both ears or what have you, using a U-shaped travel pillow where you can set your ear in the center of it and lay down, or taking a big fluffy bath towel and rolling it up and then putting it in the shape of a donut will keep ele keep it elevated and isolated off the bed and avoid all that contact. You don't understand the amount of pressure you're applying when you're asleep and the amount of movement. That constant agitation and trauma can cause issues that are very difficult to get rid of once they start and uh, they're not very pretty and they're a pain to get rid of. Bumps, basically. Keep pets away from it. Do not let them sleep in the bed with you, especially small animals that are attracted to shiny objects and like to sleep by your face. Because they're still in your breath while you sleep anyway. <laughs> Do not submerge for your second body's water you cannot control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub. That means no swimming in the ocean, lakes, rivers, creeks, uh, wash bins, uh, feed troughs, uh, swimming pools, cement ponds, water fountains, or water parks. No, you cannot swim with a healing piercing. The reason for this is the piercing is an open wound. That water's for, full of microorganisms and other contaminants, and they will work their way into the piercing and cause an infection or other problem. Got it? No swimming. Okay. If you use any comes out of a spray can or a squirt bottle in your hair, shield it with a folded up paper towel. When you go see the beautician, do the same thing. I'm always leery of not only the chemicals they're going to be using at the beautician or barber, but also that bottle of water they use to dampen your hair as they trim it, what it was changed last, what exactly is in there, um, and, you know, whether or not it's been cleaned recently. They're supposed to change it every single time, but yeah. Uh, also, become fully aware, hey, I've got this healing piercing over here, 
And if you touch it with your scissors or your comb or the brush, I'm not going to tip you. They tend to get overzealous with this combing and brushing stuff, and then they get slightly distracted and they catch it. It can cause a lot of trauma to the piercing, and it can cause a lot of issues. Avoid contact with unclean objects. Number one culprit with this is telephones. Uh, also keep earbuds, headphones, anything that comes in contact with the area needs to be cleaned on a regular basis, including glasses, sunglasses, etc., other forms of cheaters. Make sure you keep the area clean or anything that comes in contact with it. Jewelry. Leave that initial piece in until it's healed completely. That doesn't mean you could uh, you could change it out after two weeks or leave the jewelry out for any extended period of time. After that initial healing period, you can switch out to something else if you wish. However, you do want to leave something continuously in it at all times for roughly the next two to three years, only taking out to replace. Understand, regardless how long you've had the piercing, if you remove the jewelry and leave it out long enough, your body is always going to try to contract the hole, reconnect the tissue, and close the piercing. So if you like it, leave something in it. Most reputable piercers will not charge to change jewelry. Some do, some don't. I personally do not. I also do not charge to sterilize jewelry. Um, if you see something and you're not quite sure if it's going to work or not, don't hesitate to contact your piercer and ask them their advice. Even if you're not spending the money with them, they want to see that piercing have a lot of longevity because it's their art and they're happy in most cases to give you some advice. If you're looking for something very specific and you're just not finding it in your area, you might want to check out the Axiom Piercing website. Uh, I usually list about four different places there that I suggest buying jewelry online. Um, something you want to look for, and I did a whole video on buying jewelry online, is that they list the manufacturer next to the jewelry. Then you can kind of research how reputable that manufacturer is and how, uh, how good a quality it is. Uh, a lot of places that are going to come up if you search jewelry, body piercing jewelry are not the best options. So kind of search, buyer beware, understand that the two things you want to look for is the manufacturer name and their third-party testing of the material. The ASTM numbers are probably the most commonly used in the industry. But check out that other video for more information. Infections. Infections are very infrequent. I would say on the point of rare, if something doesn't complete, uh, doesn't seem right to you, you need to contact your piercer as soon as possible or seek medical attention. The two worst things you can do if you think you have an infection is put off getting taken care of because it's just going to get worse, possibly turn systematic and spread and be much more uh, difficult to resolve the longer you put off getting taken care of. The other thing is removal of the jewelry. A lot of people have some misconception that if they take the jewelry out, everything just magically goes back to normal. The problem with this thinking is how your body heals infections and what happens when you take the jewelry out. Your body heals infections by pushing infected tissue and fluids out through the wound while replacing them with healthy tissue below. When you remove the jewelry, which is the only thing keeping the two holes open, they can seal shut, possibly trapping that infected tissue and fluids inside your body, leading to one or two events happening. Worst case scenario, it turns into an inward traveling infection. It begins to actually spread into other tissue. If left untreated, it could possibly turn septic or cause permanent tissue damage. More commonly, your body will isolate the infection and then uh, by forming a cyst or an abscess, then slowly and very painfully attempt to push it to the surface. In both cases, you're going to definitely need medical treatment, and it's probably going to involve having it lanced and drained. Now, signs of infection are redness, discolorization, heat, which feels very inflamed or feverish. Discharge comes out in a pus form, usually very milky and in an odd color. Um, there can sometimes be an odor to it. Um, and shooting and traveling pains. Now, usually if you have one of those signs, you may not have an issue, but if you have multiple signs, then you definitely need to seek attention as soon as possible. It is not uncommon. Um, in that first roughly um, two days where most people, but sometimes a little bit longer, as your body gets over the trauma of the piercing and starts to accept it, to see some of those signs like redness, discolorization, heat, tenderness of the touch. Uh, this is normal. If it happens two weeks in or three weeks in or right or something like that, then you, yeah, you should be concerned. It's also not uncommon to see a tad bit of bleeding. Um, usually it's kind of collects around the piercing holes. Most people don't even notice it. 
Um, usually lasts maybe two to three days. Uh, if you do notice it, leave it alone. Let it do what it needs to do. It'll stop doing that when it need, doesn't need to do it anymore. If you're constantly getting in there and cleaning off the blood over and over and over and over and over again, chances are you just, it's like picking a scab. You're just going to make it bleed more and more and more. Plus, whatever you're using to clean it off with is a possibility of introducing additional contaminants into the air, into the wound, and causing an infection. So leave it alone is basically what I'm getting at. And whenever in doubt or something doesn't seem right to you or what have you, contact your piercer as soon as possible. Uh, generally, they're happy to get a hold of you and answer any questions you may have. That's it. That's all I have to say on how to heal an upper ear cartilage, also known as a helix piercing. God, that drives me nuts. Uh, never will not drive me nuts. Um, if you feel like I missed something or I breezed over something or something doesn't make sense to you or you have something to add, please leave a comment. Uh, I usually answer them if I have time. Also, if you have something to add to the conversation, please leave a comment. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, especially if you found it informative. If you'd like to see more of them, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and so you're notified every time we post one. If you like swag, you like t-shirts, you like tote bags, you like stickers, you like tapestries, check out our merch store. Lots of designs on there um, in various different forms that you can purchase and wear and enjoy. Till next time, you're hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your piercing needs in the future. Stay safe, everybody. Keep that social distance if we're still in that whole uh, virus period. Uh, take care of one another and be safe and be healthy. And wash your goddamn hands.